Good morning, everyone. We are now live. We will be started in a couple minutes. Uh, for now, just make sure if you need the training packet, please let me know as soon as possible. Good morning, Michael. Yes, give me one minute and I'll go ahead and send it off right now. All right, Michael, you should have received it. Please let me know if you did not. Hi, Jason. Give me one moment and I'll go ahead and send that off to you. All right, Jason, just sent it. Does anyone need the packet? All right, I'm gonna give everyone about two more minutes to go ahead and get uh, ready. What we're going to do is after those two minutes, I'm gonna show you how to log in to your browser using a demo system, and then we'll go ahead and get started. In the meantime, just let me know if you guys have any questions or concerns.
All right, everyone, good morning. Thank you for joining today's class. We're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, so what we're gonna go over today is going to be the introduction to Restaurant Systems Pro, Restaurant Setup, Daily Paperwork, Training Systems, Resources, RSP Analytics, and then the two Smart, uh, smart Shift and Smart Connect app. If you guys have any questions or concerns, on YouTube as well as Zoom, there is going to be a chat feature in case you need either the training manuals or you just have a question in general. Feel free to ask. All right. Also, so today is going to be the first day that I've changed my classes to be four hours a day, four days a week. Um, and so we may have adjustments, but I will definitely let you guys know, if, for example, if we're not able to get through every single thing today, I will definitely let you guys know for tomorrow's class. Uh, tomorrow, we'll be going over labor systems. Thursday, we're going to be going over food and beverage systems, as well as Friday, we'll go, be going over food and beverage, as well as cost of goods sold. All right. So before we actually get started in Restaurant Systems Pro, the first thing that we need to do is actually sign in um, to our correct login. So what you're going to do is raise your hand, please, if you have this, uh, if you receive the manuals. What I'm going to do is I have to assign everyone separate servers. And so I need everyone to raise their hand if they have a manual. Awesome. So Jonathan, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make you user number one. If you attend this class for the next four days, just make sure you use the same exact one. What you're going to do is in your file folder, actually it's going to be in your email, there's going to be called something wireless login information. It's a Word document. Go ahead and open up that page or that document and it's going to look just like this. What you're going to do is, Jonathan, for example, you're gonna be server number one. You're gonna copy and paste this browser link into your browser, just like this. And then from there, you're gonna go ahead and log in using this username and password. I'm gonna give you guys the username and password right now. So the username is going to be the manager. Password is going to be abc at 123, and then restaurant ID, we're in a demo system today, so it's actually going to be QFSKHT. So everyone's going to log in on their browser using this username and password. Michael, I'm going to make you user number two. So again, for the next four days, you're going to open up this wireless login information sheet, and you're going to use user number two's browser link. All right, I'm going to give everyone about three minutes to go ahead and get logged into their browser, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Anyone that just joined, please let me know if you need a manual sent to you. Hey, Jonathan, no problem. It's a little bit harder when you're not in person and you're doing this in the class. So what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and open up that email that I sent you. And in that email, there's going to be a Word document that's called wireless login information. It looks just like this. You're going to go ahead and download that document or that Word document onto your computer and open it up. When you open up that document, you're gonna have something that looks like this. 
what you're going to do is under user number one, Jonathan, you're going to go ahead and copy this browser link into your browser, just like this. From there, you're going to use this username and password to log in right over here. So you use this exact username and password, log in from here. Did you still need any help? And Michael, this is your login still. So use the same exact login that I have on the screen. Nope, I, I personally wrote your name for today's class, so I don't forget that you're user number one. So you're just going to see it look like just like this. It's just going to say user one, and you're just going to copy and paste the same link. As long as you see 8001, then you're good to go. Please let me know once you're logged in. Perfect. All right. Michael, are you logged in? Jonathan, if you want to provide me with your cell phone number, I'll have Jody call you. Kristen, the restaurant code will be QFSKHT. Today, we're going to be in, um, in a demo system. Jonathan, Jody's going to give you a call in a few seconds. All right. Thank you, Michael. Give everyone a couple more minutes. And let me know if you need to show me, uh, show you again. Hey, Kristen, which user did you use? I'm going to make you user number three. So just make sure you use that correct one. Uh, it should say 8003 at the very end of that link. All right, so anyone besides Jonathan that needs extra time to get logged in, raise your hand if you do. All right, no problem. Let me know if you're having any issues.
once you are logged in, just unraise your hand, please. All right, it looks, John, looks like Jonathan is in now. We're gonna go ahead and get started. So Kristen, just let me know if you, ha uh, if you need further time. I'm not in the right demo mode. Let, let me copy and paste. Kristen, can you provide me with your cell phone number? I'm gonna have Jody help you get logged in. All right, give me one second. All right, everyone. So while Kristen's getting logged in, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, again, thank you so much for joining today's live training class. We're going to be going over daily, pay <clears throat> daily paperwork today. Again, if you guys have any questions or concerns, please let me know, or if I'm going too fast, just let me know as well. Um, everything that we're going to be doing will be in that email that I sent you. And we will go be going step-by-step step into everything about Restaurant Systems Pro for the next four days. So before we actually get started, I'm going to go ahead and introduce myself, um, and then we will go into QFS. Again, we're going to be in a demo system for the next four days. So you don't actually mess up your system. If you have never talked to me before, my name is Brittany Tai, and I obviously work at Restaurant Systems Pro. I w I've worked here for about five years now, um, and I have started here as data entry, and I've worked my way up into consulting, and I'm also an office manager here at Restaurant Systems Pro. I've worked in a few restaurants within the time that I've worked at Restaurant Systems Pro to further my knowledge in restaurants. Today with QFS, this is a restaurant that's going to be Monday through Sunday. So everything that we're going to be doing for the next four days will be Monday through Sunday. So please be aware of that. Also, um, throughout the day, I will suggest that you make sure on the very top of your browser, excuse me, <coughs> on the very top of your browser that you see that same exact link, you will always see, for example, when I open it up, you will always see that 8003, for example, whatever number that you are assigned to. In QFS today, we're gonna go ahead and get started now. So the first thing that you'll see when you sign into Restaurant Systems Pro is going to be this main dashboard page. Up on the very top, you're gonna see a couple of different things. Reverse labor variance numbers, that's going to be your real and not clock times from your POS system. 
Now, please be aware that if you are integrated with us uh, from our POS system, then you can go ahead and automatically pull these numbers. Purchase allotment system, that's your budget for ordering. And delivery by date, that's going to be, if you click on these little arrow icons, it expands it. So that's going to be your purchases throughout the week, the current week that you're on. See, so for Monday through Sunday, the date range that we'll generate right over here is going to be Monday through Sunday. Right in the very middle of the page, we have sales forecast, that's your predicted sales, and we have end of day reporting. End of day reporting is from your POS system, and that's the end of day summary report. Of course, give me one second. Here you go, Samantha. Give us one second, guys. Sorry about that. All right. So we're going to dive back in. So we also have last week's major BVR. So your BVR report is going to be your budget variance report. Basically, everything that you've done for the last, uh, everything that we're going to be doing in the, the next four days, basically is for you to generate a budget variance report on a weekly basis. And that's where you can see your prime cost, cost of goods sold, labor report, all of that good stuff. So that's the summary report right over here. On the bottom, we have webinar replay. So all of the webinars that I've created um, in, within the last few months or within the last month will generate right over here. We have a mastermind replay. This is a one that Fred hosted about the SBA loan, the PPP. Um, for attention webinar, right over here, you can have a, another webinar replay. Just a heads up guys, all of our webinars are on youtube.com. Um, our at is going to be Restaurant Systems Pro. Up on the very top left-hand corner, there's a Restaurant Systems Pro logo. On the left of the logo, you're going to see a bell icon. Now, this bell icon, if there's any notifications, it will generate right over there. Now, because I'm signed in as a site admin, I, can actually, I can't see this feature. And just a heads up, site admins are only owners, typically. Um, now, the feature that I can see is going to be a little message icon right over here. That message icon, you can message your employees back and forth, or your employees can message each other. We have the help icon, so this is a very helpful tool. Let's just say, for example, today we're going to be going over the sales forecast. The sales forecast, this is something that you only do once a month. So let's say that you remember how to do it this month, but next month you don't remember how to do it and you're doing it at 2 a.m. at night. So what you can do is you can actually click on this help icon. From there, it's going to generate with all the PDFs and articles we have in that specific subject. What we try to do is make all of these videos a couple minutes long. So for example, how to complete the sales forecast, it shows you step-by-step -step how to complete it and it's only a two minute video. So I just wanted you guys to be aware that any section that you're in Restaurant Systems Pro, if you don't know, just click on the help icon and it will show you a video or article we have on that specific subject. We also have um, this little settings icon. So let's just say that for this restaurant, if I have multiple restaurants in the system, I can actually click on this icon as long as you have the feature to toggle. If you don't, feel free to ask your owner to allow that permission or contact us. We may need to have get approval from your owner. But that way, it allows you to toggle through restaurant without actually having to physically sign out. All right. So what we're going to do now is before we actually dive into the daily paperwork, I'm going to go over restaurant setup. With the restaurant setup part, please note this is only accessible to site admins. So you can just watch my screen for the duration of this, uh, this restaurant setup portion. And also please note, although this is only accessible to site admins, this is something that we, could, we will actually get set up with you. And I will say, even if you are a site admin, if you're not 100% sure what you're doing, please, please, please don't go in the restaurant setup and start changing things. Because what happens is you can unintentionally mess up your system by just adjusting something in restaurant setup. 
So please note. The first section under restaurant setup is going to be restaurant doc setup. Basically, this is electronic file cabinet for your restaurant. You can import anything that you'd like in here. Um, basically, anything that you can save into your computer, you can go ahead and import into the restaurant doc setup. For example, I've had people, you can see obviously monthly P&Ls and whatnot, but I've also had people upload voicemails um, because they received their voicemails via emails. I've had people import, you know, good Yelp reviews or bad Yelp reviews, whatever it may be. All you have to do is click on select file, double click on the file, click upload, and as long as it turns orange, that means we're good to go. Please note, if you upload something and you're a manager, you're not going to be able to delete it after it's been uploaded. So make sure you're uploading the correct file. Underneath restaurant doc setup, there's meal periods. Now with meal periods, this is going to be for your, we call it the schedule availability, um, but this is, that's, this is going to be for your schedule availability so we can enter that in the schedule. So on the very top, you'll see open and off. Those are gonna be defaulted roles or defaulted AM and PM. Um, now on the very bottom, you're gonna see a plus sign on the bottom grid. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to add your different shifts. Typically, you just have an open. That means I'm open availability. It does not matter. I can work mornings or nights. Um, off is I prefer to be off that day. PM is I prefer to work PM shift. And AM is I prefer to work AM shift. Now, you'll see on the very right, we have entered the start and end time. So for this specific AM lunch shift, it starts at 8 AM and stops at 1.49 PM. The PM shift starts at 2 p.m. and ends at 1 a.m. All you have to do to add one is click on the plus sign on the bottom grid. Now, typically, I will say your coach will set this up with you. You should, everyone should have a coach that they can reach out to and ask questions if they need to. Please let me know if you do not. For under the restaurant setup, station setup is the next thing. Now, this station setup is going to be for your um, inventory. Or I'm sorry, this is going to be for your prep sheet. So we have grill station, cold wine, salad station, hotline, fry station, whatever it may be for your specific restaurant. Some people may have a dessert station, for example. The good thing about Restaurant Systems Pro is we're 100% customizable to your restaurant. We have org setup. Again, this is something that will 100% complete with you. We just need to make sure all information is the same. And I try to match up what you have in your POS system as close as possible, because sometimes you will have to um, have, maybe you have two different positions in your POS, but maybe we want to add one in your RSP account, depending on what it is. Now, what we have is the departments for this restaurant. You can see we have seven different departments. Now, typically, most restaurants just have back of the house, front of the house, hourly management, and then some have salaried management. From here, you're going to click on the arrow icon to view position or add on a position. Anytime you see a plus sign on the bottom grid, that's where you can add that item. So the bottom, the bottom grid right over here, this plus sign, is to add a department. And it will tell you right over here to add a department. When you open up the little arrow icon next to back of the house, you have another plus sign, and that's to add a position. Now, within your position, you also have, for example, line codes, when I open up that arrow, you have stations. So you have a department into a position into a station. For this specific restaurant, we have dessert, cold side, saute, and grill station. On the very bottom of this, this is what we call phase option. So basically the easiest way to explain this is it's basically replacing the end time on your schedule with a word. So for example, if I was scheduled at 5 p.m. So, uh, so close, all I'm gonna be able to see as, a, as an employee is going to be 5 p.m. So close. I won't be able to actually see my out time um, just because that eliminates the process of everyone going up to you right at their end time and asking you to get cut, especially during a busy rush. The next section I'm going to go to is going to be the manager log setup. Now your manager log setup, the easiest way to explain this is it's a communication tool for your management team. 
So up on the very top, we have our standard list of questions. Uh, this standard list of questions, if your coach has not already sent this to you, please let us know. But this is just going to be our standard. What I'd like from you is if your coach sends this to you, feel free to revise it because it is a Word document. Send it back to us. And when you revise it, enter anything that's a pet peeve to you. For example, if this was my restaurant, I would have something about light bulbs uh, going out. Also, if you've never done the manager log, I will say less is more when you start. So maybe start with, for example, uh, five to 10 questions, and then you can continue adding on to it once they get used to the manager log. The manager log sends out a nightly email at the end of the night. That way all managers are on the same page. The next section is going to be manager log section. So the difference is basically this is just one question. On the bottom, we have a section. So for example, reservation. Yes, I'm asking about the reservation, but when I click on the arrow icon, you can see I'm asking for the taken by reservation date, guest name, contact, phone number, number in party, time, note, confirmed. So basically it's questions within a question. Also, I do find most restaurants start off with just the questions first, and then after a month or two, they'll go ahead and add on to the section. The next section is going to be vendor setup. Now your vendor setup, what you typically do if you're a brand new restaurant with us is you're gonna send us an Excel, you're gonna send us an Excel spreadsheet, Word document, or email, whatever it may be, of a list of all of your vendors. Now, if you're going to do purchase orders in Restaurant Systems Pro, we will need three, di three different things. We're going to need that sales rep's name, full name preferred. We're gonna need their email address as well as their cell phone number. That way, if you send out a purchase order through Restaurant Systems Pro, it automatically notifies your sales rep. And to add it, you just click on this little arrow icon. You click on the plus sign, and then from there, you're going to enter all this information. Just the phone number and the cell phone, sorry, just the cell phone number and the full name is required, but I do suggest you put in an email just in case. Also, once you do this, I would select is key contact, and I would get keep that selected, even if you have multiple so they get sent to everyone. On the bottom of this, what you're going to see is vendor notification setup. So for example, what I can do is I'm gonna open up, let's see, Atlantic Native, for example. From here, you're gonna see something where it says the name and the manager role. So this means this is Dennis Mosier. He's a manager in uh, QFF, which is the demo restaurant that we're in. This means that every single time a purchase order gets sent out directly from Restaurant Systems Pro to Atlantic Native, he's going to be notified. So that way you can confirm that it did get sent out. All you would have to do is it's going to be unselected. You would go ahead and select that as yes. Click on the edit icon. That way you can select whichever manager that you want to be able to get notifications about the purchase order. The next section is going to be category setup. Again, let me know if I'm going too fast, guys. So under restaurant setup, under category setup, this is actually going to be a couple different things. Uh, the first thing this is going to be is going to be for your end of day report. This is also where we enter your cost of goods sold categories or, or your non-sales categories. Basically, what you're going to do in order for us to actually put in this information is if you have a POS system, you're gonna go ahead and print out an end of day summary report for I'd say two to three days and send it over to your coach. Once you send it over to your coach, they're gonna go ahead and um, get that entered in the system and map out your end of day report. So one, it balances, but two, that way you have categories, payment methods and all of that good stuff in Restaurant Systems Pro. On the very top, I did notice we have an error in the system. Um, I did notice that we accidentally have two bottle beer categories but just know we, we should only have one. Also, a couple other things to keep in mind. Um, everyone in their POS system, if you sell, sell bottled beer and draft beer, they have different pour costs. So you wanna make sure in your POS system that those are actually separated, even though they're both beer. You can see the draft beer is 23% for this specific restaurant and the bottled beer is 25% cost to get sold. Scrolling down, we have payment methods. 
So if you guys have something like Uber Eats, for example, Grubhub, any of that good stuff, that will also be a payment method as long as you bring that up in your POS system. Also, just make sure that you are ringing up your sales from, uh, into your POS system for any of those delivery services. That way we can account for your full usage. We have total discounts. Now, the reason why we don't have them broken down is because your POS system already has that information, so we don't, do not need to break that down at all. Now, I've had people in the past want to break it down, and that's completely up to you um, if you want to go ahead and do that or not. Also, if you're integrated with us, you can automatically pull the end-of-day summer report directly from Restaurant Systems Pro. Uh, the one thing about that is you will have to wait until the next day, the next morning, to go ahead and import that or to go ahead and export that into your system. Under accounts payable, this is where we have sales tax, gift cards sold, hidden deposits, tips collected. Basically, anything that you're holding, but it's not actually yours. Now, the only time that you're going to have a tips collected category under your end of day report is only if you, uh, if you pay out your tips on their paycheck. If you pay them out at the end of the night, every single night, then you're going to go ahead and take uh, not have that category in your end of day report. We have a non-sales category, so these do not apply to your cost of goods sold. We have everything from keg deposits, keg, uh, e even if it's a keg credit, you're still going to put it under keg deposit. You have glassware, paper supplies, office supplies, all of that good stuff. Again, 100% customizable to your restaurant. And the very last section is going to be waste sheet reasons. Um, we have a, we had a client in Alaska that had animals as one of their reasons. So anything that you'd like, we can go ahead and enter that in there. Next is going to be our storage setup. Now your storage setup, this is going to be strictly for your inventory storage location. You can see this specific restaurant has 23 different storage locations. The next section is going to be preferences. Now your preferences, this is going to be, this is for your restaurant setup portion, uh, but there's a couple of different things and this has to be entered. So make sure that you have gone over this with your coach. Um, they may not need that information though, as long as you've already provided them with this. So we have the weekly number of overtime before, sorry, the weekly number of hours before overtime. For this restaurant is 40. Overtime type is weekly. So anything above 40 hours is going to be overtime on a week span. Overtime rate is a time and a half. The shift hours, eight hours or more, is going to be overtime for this specific restaurant. Minimum rate for this restaurant is $10. The day of the week, again, we're Monday through Sunday, so that's why we see Monday as the start day of the week. And then the benefits tax with insurance, that's going to be a percentage, that 15%, and that's from your, uh, that is from your budget creator pro. Everyone should also have a budget. The next section is going to be email processor setup. Now the email processor setup is going to be, actually, let me skip over this one for now. I'm gonna go directly in the role setup real quick. So what you can do is, let's just say, for example, you have a hostess helping you work on recipe costing cards. So with that being said, when a hostess is helping you work on recipe costing cards, um, you can actually allow them a specific role. So maybe they only have access to the product recipe in their normal employee role, so they can go ahead and request off and view their schedule. So you can see this restaurant has 13 different roles. Now, after that, under email process and setup, this is who you want to be able to receive the nightly emails every single night. So for example, that manager log, when I open up that, you can see all of these different roles. Anything that says true, that means that they can receive, they do receive the manager log. All right, the next one is going to be set up schedule notification. So for example, I can click on assistant manager and you can see Abby the manager and Brad will be notified if there's any issues with the schedule. So if for example, if assistant manager went ahead and requested, or sorry, if uh, a bar back for example, went ahead and requested off, then whoever was assigned under that will receive a notification or an open shift. Under that, that's going to be delete labor allotment. So for example, if you've accidentally entered the wrong labor allotment and you wanna make sure, excuse me, 
<laughs> and you want to make sure that there's no issues and you uh, and you want to go ahead and restart it completely. All you have to do is select the date, click delete, and it will fully delete it for you. And then that way you can restart entering that into the system. The next thing is going to be role. Actually, I just went over role. So the next thing is going to be menu category. This menu category section, as long as you have a menu online, then we'll go, we'll go ahead and get this entered for you. All right, and this is going to be for two things. It's for your recipe costing cards, but ultimately your recipe costing cards feed into your menu profit generator uh, for two different reasons. You can either use it for ideal versus actual, or you may be using it just to see your, um, to have a menu engineering call. It really just depends. Now, the next thing is going to be Link restaurant user. I can't actually click on this, but link restaurant users, if I have multiple locations, I can go ahead and link them together. And that way I have no issues with, um, I, can, I can go ahead and toggle through. Now, a couple other benefits that we have, if you're a restaurant assistance pro user, we have credit card processing savings. We have loyalty benefits that have to do with rebates, re, uh, repeat returns, secret shopping, credit card processing, text mark tech marketing, whatever you need. They are not partners with us. They're just affiliated with us. And we strongly believe in those companies. All right. So now we're going to actually dive into Restaurant Systems Pro and get started with today. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is go under daily paperwork. And I'm going to go under sales forecast. Now under sales forecast, this is what we're going to do first. Your sales forecast is your predicted sales each day of the week so you have a budget to work with. This sales forecast has to be done and it's typically done by the owner or general manager. Uh, so this may not pertain to you. Uh, the reason why it has to get done is because this feeds into your budget variance report, this feeds into your labor allotment report, this feeds into your purchase allotment report. Basically, it feeds into a bunch of different areas in Restaurant Systems Pro. So before we actually get started, what we're going to do is we're going to open up in our email, there's going to be, if you have not already, by the way, I would suggest you save these two photos and I would suggest that you go ahead and just save these onto your computer in a file. But today we're gonna to be working in day one RSP training 2020 document. Again, we're gonna use day one RSP training 2020 document. Go ahead and open up that document. And you may want to print this out. It's really up to you if you want to go ahead and print that out or not. Give me one second for mine to load. And this is what it should look like. I'm going to split my screen for this class just so it's easier. But again, if you want to go ahead and print it out, that's totally fine with me. It's up to you. All right, so once you have that folder open, again, day one RSP training 2020 folder document, you're gonna go ahead and open it up. And on page two, this is the page that we're gonna go ahead and start looking at in a few seconds. I'm gonna give everyone about 30 seconds to go ahead and get that open and then we'll get started. All right, so like I said, your sales forecast is going to be your predicted sales. Now, what that means is we need to have a predicted sales each day of the week. Give me one second. Okay, so there's two different ways to get the sale. And especially during Corona, there you might have to make further adjustments than what you typically have to do. And please make sure you do make adjustments, especially with everything that's going on right now. Um, so there's two different ways to go about this. You can be, you can use your seasonal numbers or you can use your seeking seasonal or if you're trending, you can go ahead and use those numbers. So for example, right now with everything that's going on with Corona, it might be best to use last month's numbers instead of last year's numbers and make adjustments to that from there. 
Um, if you're more seasonal and even everything that's going on right now, if your numbers are still pretty consistent, then you can go ahead and use last year's sales. So that being said, the number one thing that you need to know about Restaurant Systems Pro is the sales used in Restaurant Systems Pro is going to be gross sales. Now, our definition of gross sales may be a little bit different than your definition of gross sales. Our definition is, of gross sales is going to be uh, total sales, including comps and discounts, not including tax. So you have to make sure that's accurate. So what we're going to do is, again, I'm going to split my screen, but on the left side of my screen, I want to daily paperwork and want to sales forecast. I'm going to also pull up my calendar because it's a little bit different uh, this month. We're going to do it a little bit earlier than what we typically would do. So if I pulled up my calendar and if I'm Monday through Sunday, you're going to start seeing, uh, let's just say, for example, April 27th, the week of April 27th, fed into the week of the 3rd, uh, May 3rd. So with that being said, I always require all of my members to get their sales forecast entered by the 20th to eliminate that issue. What we're going to do in order to enter the sales forecast is super simple. Now, the first thing that you want to do is you want to click on the sales wizard on the top right hand corner of your screen. It's right to the right of the end date. And then from there, this is exactly what it looks like. A couple different things. Up on the very top, you're going to have a sample type by month or by week. I always suggest you do it by month as then you can make adjustments to your week uh, from there. We have a target sales amount. So you can do this two different ways. You can leave this blank or you can, can enter a target sales am uh, amount. And I'm gonna go through that in actually a couple seconds. Uh, we have a sample type and a target type. So for example, if I'm more seasonal, I would be using May, sorry, June 2019 number. And that's what we're going to be using. So click on this little calendar icon and select the sample month as June 2019. For the target month, this is the month that we're predicting for. So from there, I'm gonna click on the calendar icon and select June 2020. Now hit preview. From there, when you hit preview, it's going to generate with numbers. So on the left side, this is your actual gross sales from June 2019. On the right side, this is going to be your predicted sales. Now, like I said, there is a couple ways to go about this. Let's just say, for example, last, or last year, since we're using last year's numbers, we did $250,000 in sales. Because everything that's going on, we think that we're only going to do $100,000 in sales. What I can do is under target sales, I can make the adjustment to 100,000 instead for the total month. And I can hit preview. And the system will do the math for you and calculate it for the $100,000 target sales. Now, something I could also do is I could leave that target sales blank. And if you don't know exactly what you're doing now, but you know it by percentage, for example, what you can do is if, you, if you're doing, let's just say, 20% uh, less than you are, are now from the previous year, I can actually under this percentage column enter negative 20 for a specific day, or I can apply their percentage to all days. And you can just watch my screen, by the way, for this, this portion of it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click yes. And then what the system did was apply that percentage to every single day and subtracted 20%. So I didn't have to do the math. Also, keep in mind if there is any holidays for this and this month that you want to go ahead and zero it out right over here. You just zero it out from here. And that way, the system will make the adjustments for you. Today, what we're going to do is I'm actually going to re-enter everything. Give me one second. And for the target sales amount, we're going to enter on our worksheet right over here. It says 273,000. So your page should look exactly by, like mine. Sample type by month, target sales. We have a sample month and a target month. And you're gonna hit preview. Now the cool thing is the system knows what your busiest days are.
All right. Any questions or concerns? Also, something else you need to keep in mind is let's just say that Christmas last year was on a Sunday and this year it's on a Monday. That makes a huge difference. And so just make sure that you have that, uh, that you make that adjustment. All right, so lastly, we're gonna go ahead and click save. Give it a second to load. All right, you can see this loaded on my screen. I always verify my work right over here. So I'm gonna change this date range to be June. I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down and then it's make sure my numbers did save. Now, one thing I will say, and I just wanna mention this because uh, most people already have this information in their system, but the first thing that you need to do and your coach will do this with you, um, is just make sure that you do have a sales mix in the system. So you can see these little arrow icons next to each day of the week, but there's a sales mix in here that has to calculate to 100%. So what this is saying is that 80.5% of my sales goes towards food. Draft beer is 6.85% of my sales. This comes from your POS system, or if you're entering end of day report in our system, you can go to the end of day reporting. You can scroll down, scroll to the right, and then from there, you can see our current percentage for food was 80.5%. This one is 80.49 according to our POS system. So very, very similar. If you don't know the sales mix, this is the easiest way to go about it. And that's under the percentage totals in your end of day report. Any questions or concerns? All right, so the next section that we're going to go over is going to be the daily paperwork, under daily paperwork um, called end of day report. Again, go ahead and open up your folder, your packet, and we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna see something that's called sales report. It's going to be page four to page seven. Go ahead and open that up in your folder. And we're gonna start on Monday. So what we're going to be doing is, it's honestly, all this is going to be data entry and anyone in your restaurant can do this. So earlier today, I was speaking about your end of day summary report from your POS system and how you're gonna send us two to three end of day summary reports so we can set up your system. What we also do while we're setting up your categories is actually um, balancing out your end of day report to your POS system. So I suggest on a first or second call, whenever you do have the information for your coach, they'll go ahead and balance it out. And I suggest you actually print this out. And once you actually get on the call to highlight or bold out just like this, every single column that you're gonna go ahead and enter, because like I said, all this is is data entry. So now that I have that opened up under daily paperwork, I'm gonna go to my end of day reporting. From here, you can see we have Monday already entered. Um, we need to go ahead and enter Tuesday. So today is Tuesday and typically we're just gonna pretend that this is the end of the night um, because this is something that you enter at the end of the night once you close out all of your drawers or the first thing the next morning. The reason why you wanna do it as soon as you close out everything is if you're over short, for example, uh, you're most likely going to know exactly why you're over short if you just worked a shift for eight hours rather than a manager that didn't even work that shift. So what we're going to do is you're gonna search for 5-5 Tuesday and you're gonna double click on that day. This is typically done by the way by the front of house manager. Now, if I did not already mention this little icon in the top left hand corner, will minimize the left side of your screen. I'm gonna go ahead and split my screen so we can go ahead and get started. And actually, I apologize, we're actually gonna to go to sales report for Tuesday. So make sure it says Tuesday.
Now, all we're going to do now is data entry. So the first section that you're going to see is going to be the sales category. Then we have accounts payable, deductions, and payment methods. As you can see, for example, sales category, if I look to the right of my screen on my end of day summer report from my POS system, we have the gross sales. Now, again, uh, remember that some POS systems call our definition of gross sales their definition of net sales. So you have to make sure that's accurate. All I'm going to be doing now is once I find my draft beer category, for example, right over here, I'm going to enter that gross amount. So it's 449.2 and go down the sales category and enter the rest of the numbers. Go ahead and do the same. Again, let me know if I'm going too fast. Then once you're done with the sales category, go ahead and continue on with the accounts payable, deductions, and payment methods. For accounts payable, it's gonna be a little bit scattered. So you can see we have our taxes right over here. We have our, let's see, our tips right over here, the 822.1. And then we have gift cards sold, we sold $50 worth. Move on to discounts. And then just a heads up while everyone is doing this, a cash deposit amount. So for today's class, we are gonna enter the cash deposit amount in the end of day summer report. I just want everyone to be aware, sometimes you're not gonna have that same exact cash amount. This is the cash amount that you're actually taking to the bank for that day. Uh, so just make sure sometimes it does not match up with your POS system because maybe you had some paid outs or whatever it may be. You didn't ring them up. Go ahead and finish up entering the rest of these categories. And your, your end of day report should not take you longer than I say 10 minutes. If you can't balance it out, please just give us a call. Um, we're open for 10 hours a day, and we'll go ahead and balance it out for you. Do not waste your time trying to balance something out for hours. Once you're done, yours should look exactly like mine. You should have these little red arrow icons. You're not going to save yet, so just go ahead and hold off on this and wait until the rest of the class is completed. I'm going to give everyone about three minutes, and we'll, we'll go ahead and proceed. Right now, it's 9.47, so we'll start at 10. Also, just a heads up, I know this class is still four hours long, so I will be allowing everyone to take about, you know, uh, here and there, we'll be taking about 10 minute breaks.
if you're already completed, go ahead and take a 10 minute break. And then we will go ahead and give everyone, let's see. Yeah, let's go ahead and take a 10 minute break. If you've already completed, we'll all come back at, uh, right now it's about to be 10, to so come back at 10, 15, just to give everyone a little extra time if they need to finish up the end of day report. Again, do not save because I wanna go ahead and show you guys the next step uh, while you guys are waiting.
Hi, everyone. Just a reminder, we're going to go ahead and get started in about four minutes. One more minute. All right, everyone, we are back. So does anyone need extra time? Please raise your hand if we do. But just a heads up, about every hour, we're going to be taking about a 10-minute break. All right, no problem. So make sure if your Restaurant Systems Pro gave you a notification to sign out, make sure you go ahead and resume and stay in. We're going to jump back into the end-of-day report. And there's a couple of different things that I want to mention to you. Um, so paid out. Let's just say, for example, if the bar ran out of lemons and the bar manager handed you a $20 bill from the POS system and, and um, so the POS system and you go to Walmart to buy lemons and to change the receipt, 
then go ahead and make sure that one, that you are putting that in your POS system so it balances out, and two, you have to enter it in end of day report to so actually balance out your end of day report right over here. You can see on the right side of my screen under paid out, you should have a paid out total right over here if there was one. Now, some POS systems, you actually have to put that into your POS, some of them, um, so just make sure that it is counting for your paid out. And you'll be able to see it right over here once that paid out is entered. Another thing is over short. You can see on the end of day report, it says that we should be negative by 63 cents. On the left side of my screen, on the top, it tells me I am negative by 63 cents. So that over short should match up completely. Now, if it does not match up, please let us know again. Do not spend hours trying to balance it out. Uh, maybe if you just ask us, most likely we are able to find the issue and balance it out for you. Go ahead and save. And just a heads up, these little arrow icons, you're going to see that often in REST on Systems Pro. All that is is telling you that you should go ahead and save. I'm going to go ahead and click on the save icon. From there, you're going to be able to see 55 five, Tuesday over short of 63 cents. It's going to tell you the gross amount and a great way to identify if you've entered the correct amount is if your net, if you remember, we're only using gross numbers in the system. As long as your net sales amount matches up completely with the net sales amount in Restaurant Systems Pro, that's how you know it balanced out. And that's how you know the system did the math right and you've entered this correctly if your net sales calculated accurately. That's all we have to do for the end of day report. You can adjust the end of day report section up on the very top using the date range. You can load the report. You can export this to Excel. You can go ahead and click on the edit, add new record. Uh, what that is, if you don't want to double click on it, you can click on it one time and then click on edit, add new records. That's typically on an iPhone or Android. You can't double click. And so you can go ahead and go about it that way. You're going to see that edit icon often in the system. If you're not, if you're on a device, you can't double click on. And then also we have history. So this is actually a brand new feature. So let's just say that I balanced out Tuesday's end of day report. Then I went into the system the next day and noticed that it's now negative by $100. I can click on the item or the day one time so it's highlighted blue, click on history, and I'm gonna be able to see every single person that went into this end of day report and click save. That way you know exactly who made the adjustments to that day. Also, one more thing I want to mention is on this, in the actual end of day report, when you're entering the numbers, you have a section that you can enter a comment. So let's just say 63 cents over short due to so if someone's drawer was just over short by 63 cents, you can go ahead and write that, save it. And the cool thing is it will actually um, to generate that day as red when you hover your mouse over it. Anytime you see it highlight as red like that, that means that there's more information in the schedule as well. If you hover your mouse over it, you're going to be able to see the actual comment itself. Again, guys, please let me know if I'm going too fast. Now, the next section that we're going to move on to is going to be the invoice log. So in your packet, go ahead and take out, it's going to be underneath the end of day report. There's not an actual page number. Uh, technically, it would start on page eight. You're gonna see three US Foods invoices and three other vendor invoices. Page eight to page 13, it looks like. Go ahead and take that out of your packet. If you printed it out, for anyone that did not print it out, just go ahead and open this up. And we're going to go to the very last page of the US Foods one and start on there with this one. It should tell you a little red arrow icon that says enter these items. From there, what we're going to do is under daily pay for, please go to invoice log. Now, please note, if you're uh, bookkeeping with us, uh, we actually have the ability to import all of your invoices for you. So you, you may be doing this a little bit differently. There's three different ways basically to go about invoicing in Restaurant Systems Pro. 
One way is going to be the way I'm about to show you. Now, the way I'm about to show you is going to be, there's only two different reasons why you would go about it this way. So one reason is if you have an invoice with just paper supplies and your owner doesn't require you to fully enter it as an order, so line by line with each product, and they only require you to enter it as an invoice log since it's not applied to your cost of goods sold, then you can enter it this way. Another reason why you would enter, be entering it this way, and I, I, I call it the easy way of entering the invoices or the orders, um, is if you're brand new to the system and you don't have anything set up in your system yet in the product section, so food, food beverage, or retail system, but you still want to have this information in there, then we typically have you get caught up for the current month that you're on in the invoice log section. That way we have numbers in there and can at least give us a total. Let me know if you guys have any questions or concerns about that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, go to daily paperwork, go to invoice blog. From here, this is what the page looks like. On the bottom of my screen, I have totals by category. So an easy way to, to confirm that you've saved something is going to be totals by category. When, it, when you save your work and it updates the total, that's how you know it actually fully saved and is now applying to your cost to get sold. On the right side, you have totals by date. On the very top, it automatically generates the current month that you're on. We can view by group or view by uh, view group by date or view by vendor now. This is a newer feature. And then again, anytime I say bottom grid, I'm referring to this bottom section, does not matter which page I'm on. This bottom ha section has a plus sign, edit icon. You can view the details icon uh, with this paper icon right over here. We have a delete icon. We can export to Excel, export to PDF. For today's example, what we're going to do is add a new invoice. Also, if it did not make sense to you what I was referring to when I said that this is the easier way of entering an invoice and not attached to an order, uh, it will make a lot more sense on Thursday if you've never done this before. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the plus sign on the bottom grid and we're going to enter an invoice. So the date is going to be for the delivery date. So for all the invoices that we're going to enter today, the delivery date will be for today. Make sure you do not enter the date of order as that date range. For the vendor, this is a drop down box with a list of all of your vendors. For this specific invoice, I'm going to go ahead and select US Foods. Under invoice number, even if this is a handwritten invoice, you should always be prov provided with an invoice number. So we're going to go ahead and enter this number right over here. Lastly, on the very top portion of it, we're going to enter the amount. This is going to be the grand total amount, including any additional cost. So for this specific invoice, you can see we did separate it by food, janitorial supplies, and paper supplies. And it looks like the grand total, including tax, is $1,191.67. So I'll enter that amount right over here. I'm going to give everyone about 20 seconds to finish up this top portion. And then we're going to move on to the actual categories. All right, so once you're done entering the top portion of this, what we're going to do is we're going to start adding our categories to specify which cost of goods sold category or which category in general applies to this. So 
number one thing is U.S. Foods, Shamrock, Benny Keith, all of those big vendors, they won't separate uh, these totals for you. You're going to have to manually add them up. Now, we've already added this up for you, but I just want to give you that heads up. Most of them will separate them by subcategories like freezer, dry storage. But for example, freezer and dry storage spices, food is food to us. And so we would actually combine all of these different categories together to give us these totals on the very bottom. What we're going to do is on the left side of my screen, under invoice log items, I'm gonna click on the plus sign. And for this specific invoice, you're gonna click on the plus sign three different times. One for food, and I'm gonna select this drop down box to be food. One for janitory supplies, and one for paper supplies. Because paper supplies, janitory supplies do not apply to my cost of goods sold, so I wanna make sure I separate my category. From here, under food, um, under the amount cut column, we're gonna enter the subtotal amounts for each item or for each category. So on the right side of my screen, you can see um, $1,073.15 for food. On the left side, under the amount column, I'm gonna enter those amounts. Now for this specific restaurant, instead of having a sales tax category, and this is up to you and your restaurant, we actually put our sales tax applied to our paper supplies because we do not get taxed unless we have supplies within the invoice. <clears throat> so you may wanna go about this two different ways. Your specific restaurant may have one more category that's, under, that's called sales tax, and you're gonna enter that sales tax uh, separately. Or for this specific restaurant, we have a paper supplies, and then under the description, I can go ahead and write sales tax. And the sales tax was $2.98, and that's the category that included it. Any questions so far? All right, awesome. A um, Couple other things, accounting code. This is from your QuickBook. You absolutely did not need to enter the accounting code in order for it to map out to your QuickBook. So um, that's really up to you if you wanna go ahead and utilize that feature or not. Lastly, a couple, actually one more thing uh, before I move on. For the categories, you can see for this specific invoice, there's probably about uh, it looks like about, I'd say, 30 items within this invoice. I am not going to click on this plus sign 30 different times and separate each item. I'm just going to do a subtotal category for each and enter the total amount under each category right over here. The reason why is for all of my members, or even if your, um, if your coach has not told you this, I would require, if you're the owner, I would require your managers to upload a photo of their invoice instead. That way, one, they don't have to sit there and break down every single thing, and two, you will always have the photo to refer back to. I'm gonna click on Upload. I'm gonna select Files. And then I'm gonna go ahead and import the photo of the invoice. You can see right over here, if you wanna open it up further, you can click on this little, um, this little magnifying icon. I'm gonna click Save. So everyone click Save. And as soon as I click save, a couple of things happen. Up on the top, you'll see the date range uh, generated. On the very bottom, my total for each of these both generated. That's how I know it now applies to my cost of goods sold, my budget variance report. And again, you do have the magnifying icon on this main page to look at the actual invoice photo. There's two different ways to go about that. Actually, there's a couple of different ways. You can, uh, maybe you wanna enter the invoice on a computer, but you wanna upload using a tablet. You can absolutely do that. You can also, uh, you would be also be able to send this photo directly to your email and then save it on your computer and then go ahead and import it from there. Um, and those are the two different options that you have. And obviously same thing as a tablet, you can do this on your phone if you'd like. It's really up to you. Again, if you are a current accounting member with us, a bookkeeping member, then we, also, we will 
uh, we will actually upload the invoices for you under the invoice upload portion. So all you have to do is on your app, there's going to be a Smart Connect app. All of our apps are free, by the way, if you did not know that already. You would upload a photo of the actual invoice, so just like this on the right side of my page. Upload that, and then I'd say within 24 hours, it will be processed into your system. Uh, please note, if you get behind on invoices and you try to import 50 in one day, you have to be patient and give us a little extra time to get this all entered. Because if you're uploading invoices, this should actually be imported on a daily basis. All right. Any questions? All right. Give me one second. Awesome. Um, now, I'm not going to show you guys right now how to upload an invoice, but once we get to it, we will go ahead and go. Uh, we will go ahead and start that. All right. So the next session that we're going to be going over is going to be, actually, I apologize. So now that we've done the US Foods invoice, we're gonna go back into the invoice log on our daily pay for. And I would like you guys on your own to enter the three other invoices. You can see it starts with page 11, goes on to page 13 and page 12. Go ahead and enter those on your own. And again, please ask the, uh, any questions that you have. All of the dates are going to be for today. And if you want me to go over this one more time with you, just please let me know as well. All of the different invoices we've already separated for you. Actually, just a heads up with this specific invoice for beverages, I just want to make it clear. You can see there's a keg deposit, uh, there's a credit and there's a charge. And there's a $30 balance within the two because it's negative $90 and a plus credit of uh, a charge of $120. So with that being said, for this specific invoice, I would just select the CAD deposit category one time. And then under the total, I will just do the difference instead of having two different CAD deposit categories. Then I can just click on the plus sign two more times and add my draft beer and my bottle beer total. As, as long as your, um, your information is accurate, by the way, you will see the remaining balance as zero. And feel free to upload a photo. If you want to go ahead and practice, you can upload with anything. We're in a demo system, uh, um, so you can really upload anything, and then we'll delete it tomorrow, so no problem. Go ahead and move on to the other vendors once you're done. Again, page 12 and page 13, the vendor is called Pickup Store.
Does anyone need any extra time to enter the invoices? Please raise your hand if you do. All right, no problem. I'm going to give you about five more minutes. Now, as of right now, just so everyone knows, we are a little, uh, we seem to be right on time with our time frame. Now, the one thing I will say is I am not sure if we're for sure going to be going over the two apps today, just because that section takes about 15 minutes and we have about two more hours left. But if anything, we will go over that tomorrow and I will definitely let everyone know by the end of the class. Please just unraise your hand once you're done. I'm going to give everyone about four more minutes. We'll go ahead and proceed at 10.45. Feel free to grab a cup of coffee if you're still waiting. Or feel free to ask me any questions.
Anyone need extra time? All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and move on. Please let me know if you have any questions, though. So the next section that we're going to move on to is going to be the manager log section. Again, your manager log, all that is, is a communication tool for your managers at the end of the night. So a couple of different things. Give me one second. Let me actually pull up an email just so you guys have a good understanding of what I'm referring to. And then what I'm also going to do is under daily paperwork, please go to manager log. All right. So it's a communication tool for all of your management team. That means at the end of the night, depending on your dispatch time, you will be receiving an email with everyone else's questions and answers. So at the end of the night, when you receive that email, this is what it's going to look like. It's going to contain, you can see up in the very top, it tells you exactly who receives this email. This is a pat, um, an old email from 2015, so please note there has been some adjustments made to it. Let me see if I actually have an updated one. I don't believe I do. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys an old one, but just know we have made some updates and they're little updates like we've added uh, price update changes and whatnot into your Mandalog. So up in the very top, you're gonna see the Mandalog question. Anyone that answers this, so there's five people that answer this in one day, then you're gonna see all five answers. On the bottom of this, you're going to have your section, reservation, open table, voice, email, employee issues, repair and maintenance, injury, accidents, all of that good stuff. On the very bottom, you'll have end of day report, reverse labor report. And then again, because this is an old email, we have made some adjustments since then. And you're now going to be able to receive any price updates that you've uh, received within the last couple or within that day. So especially with everything that's going on with corona in the meat uh meats are going higher right now the price is going higher so you're able to, to easily see that price change in your end of day email also any new products this is a great helpful tool if you need to group new products um at the end of the night use that guide with whatever, whatever new products you have to be able to go ahead and uh, use that as your guide to be able to group your products together. So what we're going to do is once I go into the daily paperwork and go to manage log, this is what the screen looks like. If you're the first manager, just like how we all are to be answering this manager log today, it's going to look just like this for you. What you're going to do is it automatically generates to the current, uh, the current day that you're on. There's a drop down box in case you want to go ahead and see who is receiving the manager log, or maybe you just want to see, uh, maybe you just want to send it off directly to them before that dispatch time. For this specific restaurant, our dispatch time is like 2 a.m. And let's just say I have a reservation for that day. I want to make sure that Brittany sees it so I can send it directly to her or to myself, whatever, uh, after I've answered the question. That way you don't have to wait till the end of the night to be able to see that. You can print this off as PDF, and all this is is data entry. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this plus sign under Manager Log, and on the right side of my page, I've already entered the answers for you. This is a demo system. Feel free to go ahead and, to go ahead and enter your own answers. All right, so we're going to go down this list, and most restaurants require every single question to be answered. Uh, for today's demo, I'm not going to answer every single one, but just a heads up. Now, I will say, I've worked, like I said, I've, I worked at a couple restaurants that use Restaurant Systems Pro. The number one thing I want you guys to make sure of is, or to add into the questions is, what products did you and your staff accomplish? I've seen a lot of managers run around the restaurant and make sure at the end of the night that they have something to write down for that specific question. So 
go ahead and fill in these questions. Again, don't fill, you don't have to fill out all of them. And then save that once you're done. I'm going to go ahead and give everyone about two minutes to go ahead and finish that up. Does anyone need extra time? All right, so just for the sake of today's class, I'm just gonna go ahead and show you guys the section on one of them. You can just watch my screen for this portion. Even if you've not answered all of your questions, that's totally fine, just go ahead and save your work. But you can see as soon as you save, you're gonna be able to see your, your name as well as your answers. The next manager that clocks in and goes into the manager log will be able to see your answers as well. And then they'll be able to see the plus sign on the bottom without it being blank right over here since someone already answered the question. Scrolling down, I'm gonna just go ahead and show you guys reservations. For example, when I click on add new, it gives me a couple different things I need to fill out. Pick and buy, reservation date, guest name, contact name, uh, number and party, time, note, confirm. Now, unfortunately, as of right now, today is 5-5-2020, we do not have the ability to directly send you a text message or an email letting you know that there is a notification. So when you see that, you will have to put it on your calendar still. We have employee issues. Again, when I click on the plus sign, you're gonna be able to see the employee, the position, issue, time, date, how was it resolved? Any questions? All right, so it really is just a simple communication tool. And the good thing about this is once all of your managers start utilizing this, you can know exactly what's going on in your restaurant without even having to be there. The next thing I'm gonna go over is going to be, let's see, let's go over. Hi, so just as anonymous attendee, so I'm not sure what your name is, but your question was, when you enter an employee issue, does that go into their file? Unfortunately, it does not go into their file. 
uh, the manager log is completely separate than the employee section. So you will have to, there's a couple different things that you can do. Honestly, most of the time, people will put it under the employee issue just for the manager log. I'm sorry, they'll put it under the employee issue under the manager log just for the sake of all the managers being aware of what's going on. But they'll also go back and enter it into the employee doc section, employee log, just to permanently have it there. Now, you don't have to do it that way. You don't have to enter in two different ways. It's completely up to you. If you do want to just enter all of your employee issues under the manager log, that's totally fine because you can actually cl click on go to search. And you can search for a specific question or you can search for a specific section or a specific name within the section, whatever it may be. So if you want to look for the last two years, what Brad Hackard, um, any notes that Brad Hackard has put into the employee issue part, then you can go ahead and do so. All right, so for the remainder of today's class, we are completely done for today with that packet. So you can go ahead and just put it aside for tomorrow, and then tomorrow we'll be finishing up day two. I'm sorry, we'll be finishing up packet day one. At Thursday and Friday, we'll be finishing up packet day two. So you may want to have that printed out and ready by the time that we go over that uh, tomorrow, Thursday, and Friday. All right, so the next section I'm going to go over is going to be the checklist dashboard. Your checklist dashboard, this is going to be where you're entering all of your checklists. Now, just a heads up, anything that you currently see in our demo system, if you want this in your specific restaurant, we can actually copy it over from one restaurant to the other. Also, if you don't have a checklist already in your system, or maybe you don't have a checklist in general, uh, there's a couple of different ways that you can go about that. You can either go ahead and create one manually on a Google document or maybe a Word document. You can go ahead and um, look for it online on the web or under resources. If you're a manager or an owner, you should have access to resources. Um, but from there, we actually have a bunch of different checklists for you under this resource, resources section. So we have everything from employee handbook to harassment prevention training to hire smart. Uh, for example, let me go ahead and open up human resources forms. We have employee checklist tables uh, from there. And then under, I want to say quick operations. Let me go ahead and find it one second. Oh, under operation forms, you'll see a manager checklist. Uh, we have the uh, back of the house walkthrough checklist. Basically, everything that we you need, we probably already have in the system. So feel free to contact us if you can't find it, and we can help you find that document, whatever you're looking for. Also, not only that, but I mentioned that we have employee handbooks, we have training manuals, we have everything that you need in here. And the cool thing is, we put them all in pretty much Word documents that you're able to edit. And instead of having a general restaurant name or just put restaurant there instead, you can actually put your name in there your restaurant name in there. So for today's training, we actually don't ever go fully in depth with the checklist. I just wanna show you guys a couple things that you need to know about the checklist. Uh, what I suggest you do is you get on an hour call on just going over the checklist with your coach. Again, everyone that's in my class or in general, that's um, a team, a part of our Restaurant Systems Pro community, you should have a coach that you can reach out to um, with whatever questions that you have. Also, not only that, but you also have all of the regular coaches and you can go ahead and contact them as well. So on the very bottom of any screen that you're on, you're gonna see our training and technical support Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, our phone number as well as our support email. On the left side of our screen, bottom left-hand side, you're gonna see a chat icon. That chat icon, is going to be accessible um, 10 hours a day, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And it's just like Instant Messenger. So I can click on chat, enter my information. Start the chat. And then you'll see within a couple minutes, someone will go ahead and respond to you with whatever questions that you have. So it can be something as simple as, 
I can't log in. Or maybe you um, need to help get help making a product usable, or maybe you forgot how to how to look at videos and you're looking for a specific video. You can see that took Jody less than 30 seconds to respond, hello. So it's a really great feature. Thanks so much, Jody. We appreciate you. All right. So I just wanted to give you that heads up in case you're having issues with Restaurant Systems Pro um, and not understanding something. This is very overwhelming, and I will be honest. The next couple of days, yeah, our class is only four hours now instead of eight hours, but it is still a lot of information for one person to retain all at once. So I absolutely do not expect anyone on my class, uh, in my classes, to retain every single thing I went over. But the good thing is it gives you a great idea of where we're at. you're at in Restaurant Systems Pro, where you need to be at and what you need to do next in the bigger picture. Uh, because if you're not doing something as simple as an day report that takes you 10 minutes, you know, less than 10 minutes a day, that affects your entire system. And it's really just an overview of knowing what feeds into what and how the system works together. So um, a couple of different things with the checklist. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and show you one second. Jody wanted me to let you guys know to have a great training, but what we're going to do is I'm going to show you an example. So let me pull one up of a checklist and I just want to show you a different example of the checklist types that we have in our system. So the checklist types we have our measurements. For example, if I double click on the measurement, this is one of my favorite ones. My message is your cooler is out of range. Basically, my range for my cooler needs to be within 32 to 40 degrees. And if they enter anything without um, out of that frame, so um, out of 32 or 40 uh, degree range, then it will automatically notify the manager letting you know that your cooler needs to be checked on. For example, we have everything as simple as yes or no. We have a check mark. We have check boxes. We have employee drop down boxes multiple choice, we have subtitles, free responses, short entry, ratings, one through five, date and time, whatever it may be. Again, if you don't have any checklist in your system, maybe you can ask your, or ask your coach and they'll go ahead and copy over whatever you're looking for if we already have that existing. Also, we can copy over from one restaurant to the other as well. We just have to make sure with that owner that um, we're able to share that checklist. Now, a couple of different things within the checklist. You are able to assign two positions, two station or meal periods. So maybe someone's working AM shift or PM shift, whatever it may be. And this is for AM server checklist. On the very bottom, this is shared to employee. So the difference is up here, sharing to a schedule. On the bottom, you're sharing to a specific employee. So it does not matter if Bob Jones is working um, five days a week, every single day, seven days a week, he will receive a notification about this checklist. Now, obviously, he doesn't have to answer it on his days off, but just know that is the differences. So if maybe this one was a manager checklist for a specific manager, you don't want your managers to share, you can clone them and share to each specific manager from there. Now, also, one thing that's very important about our or about about our checklist is going to be the reoccurring time. So for this specific checklist, when I click on edit reoccurrence, this specific checklist repeats daily on a weekly basis, all days of the week. And we have a checklist start time at 9 a.m. till 1 p.m. This means if I go into the system at 8 a.m., I actually won't be able to see this checklist. And this is a, a big uh, issue that a lot of people have. It's not actually an issue. It's just not understanding how to search for the checklist more so. So what you would want to do to be able to see that checklist that's out of the range that you're looking at is you would click on this end date. You would zero it out completely. So this end date needs to be zeroed out. You would hit search. And I want you guys to notice right now we're at 19 items. When I hit search, every single checklist, if it's out of the range, will generate. And actually, all of the checklists that are currently assigned are um, within the same reoccurring time. So that's why the numbers did not change. But if you want to see something that you're not able to see right now, you can go ahead and delete the end time, click search and search for it from here. Any questions? Also, something I did not mention is you do have the ability to go ahead and, um, and, and answer the, the checklist on your app. 
to just a heads up about that. You can absolutely do it on a browser. It's really just for the convenience purposes of it. And it's really up to you if you want your employees and staff to be uh, able to have their phone out like that. Now, some people do not want to allow that. Uh, they don't want to allow an extra reason for them to have their phone out. And that's completely up to you, and that's fine. So what I would suggest is maybe if you already have a tablet or maybe buy a tablet, put that in your kitchen, and then that way everyone can find in and out using that same tablet and answer their checklist. Also, we have an inactive section too. So even if you delete a checklist, it's still under the inactive section unless a site admin completely took it out of the system. Again, only site admins can completely delete things out of the system. Now, any questions about checklists? Like I said, I'm just gonna go, uh, I just went ahead and did a quick overview. I'm not gonna go too far in depth about the checklist. All right, guys, no problem. So we're gonna move on then to the next section. Um, but please, again, reach out once you are ready to go over those checklists. The next section that I would like to go over is going to be, and actually, I'm so sorry, guys. I thought we were done with our packet today. We are actually not. We need to open up our packet one more time. And there's one thing in there that we need to enter, and that's a paid out. Let me go ahead and find that paid out. One moment, guys, I apologize. All right, so go ahead and take out page three under the day one RSP training packet. It should be a Costco and a Walmart receipt. All right, guys, now we're going to go ahead and get started. So under daily pay board, we're going to go back to the paid out log. Now, again, let me explain to you guys what a paid out log is. Now, a paid out log is going to be any time you take money out of your front cash register. Now, I want to make sure I'm clear. Petty cash is not a paid out. Even if you take cash out of your safe in the actual office itself, that is still an invoice. Company checks, company credit cards, that is still an invoice. So just make sure that I'm clear, uh, that you're clear that a paid out is only when you take money out of your cash register in the front. So again, here's my example. Let's say the bar ran out of lemons, the bar manager handed you a $20 bill, told you to go to Walmart, you came back with a change of the receipt, then that would be a paid out. It looks just like the invoice log section that we went over a few, uh, about 30 minutes ago. So please make sure you are in the correct section. And like I said, your paid out log feeds into your end of day report. You one, you need to make sure it is entered in the system. And two, you wanna make sure it's on the correct day or else it's gonna completely throw off your end of day report. All right, what we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and click on the plus sign on the bottom, or on the bottom grid and then start filling out the paid out. Let's do the Costco one together, and I'm gonna have you do the Walmart one on your own. What we're going to do is under the date, you can see for this paid out, it did not get entered yesterday. So we're gonna go ahead and select this calendar icon and select the fourth. 
for the receipt number, we're going to go ahead and enter the receipt number right over here. Store name, this is going to be Costco. There's literally only two differences from the payout log to your invoice log. Receipt number is invoice number in the invoice log. Store name is a drop down box of a list of your vendors, and this is the one you manually add. For the amount, again, grand total amount, including any additional cost. So this one has uh, $2.41 worth of sales tax, and that's 1.8% of sales tax. Just like the invoice log, we're going to click on the plus sign. For the cost of receipt, it looks like it's just one category, which will be food. Because this is an actual receipt um, from Walmart, there is tax, or sorry, from Costco, there is tax on it. Under the grand total amount, again, you're going to enter this amount. So total amounts, if there's different categories, and you're going to click on upload. Select the file and you're gonna upload the photo of the receipt. That way I always have it. Um, and then like, like everyone knows, uh, receipts disintegrate. So that's an easy way to always have it on hand, just in case. Again, your remaining balance should total up completely. We're gonna save this. And we're actually, let's go ahead and change this invoice number. I'm gonna add a one at the very end, just a heads up. Oh, actually what you can do is, uh, to be honest, most receipts don't provide you with an invoice number. So what I would do is I would just use a date range, 04, 05, 04, 2020. Make that your invoice number, your paid out number if they don't provide you with one. When you save that, it should allow you to save. Once you're done, move on to the Walmart receipt. The Walmart receipt will be for today. Again, with the receipt number, go ahead and just change that to be the date range of the current day that we're on or the day that this invoice occurred on. I'm gonna give everyone about five minutes to go ahead and get that entered. Couple of minutes.
Does anyone need extra time? Please <clears throat> raise your hand if you do, excuse me. Go ahead and save that once you're done though. All right, guys, we're making really good uh, time with what we have. So we've already gone over a lot of the sections, sales forecast, and a day report, uh, purchase report, invoice log, paid out pay dot log, manager log, checklist, dashboard. We actually have one more section to go over in the purchase allotment system. So good news, we actually most likely will be done with this class a lot earlier than I expected. Um, we do still have to go over resources, RSP, analytics. Actually, we, we went over resources. We still have to go over the two apps and RSP analytics, as well as one more section under the daily paperwork. Now, so far, I know we've gone over a lot of different sections. Does anyone have any questions regarding anything in the system? Even if it's something that we have not touched base on, go ahead and ask me the questions if you have any. All right, awesome. So what I'm going to do then is let's go ahead and go over all of these sections. Just feel free to ask questions if you have any or write down notes, or you can contact me directly. My email is Brittany, B-R-I-T-N-E-Y, just like Brittany Spears, at restaurant systems with a S, pro.net. Uh, basically, everyone has the same exact email in the system. It's just their name instead of Support, for example, it would just be Brittany at RestaurantSystemsPro.net, Katrina at RestaurantSystemsPro.net, Fred at RestaurantSystemsPro.net. All right, so this last section in daily paperwork is going to be my purchase allotment system. Now, your purchase allotment system, this is, this is going to be your budget for ordering. So this is a huge part of the system. Now, something awesome that we were able to do is Fred Langley. I don't know if you guys know who he is, but he is actually our CEO of Restaurant Systems Pro. And he was able to order some for someone that was extremely sick. He was able to order for them for three months just based off their car levels and on budget due to the purchase allotment system. So it is on, honestly amazing what you can do once you, you, you actually understand this report. Now, disclaimer. The number one thing I will say is the purchase allotment report. I've done this for a long time now, and this is the number one report that I find that people have trouble understanding. I find that people automatically understand something like the budget variance report and all where all those numbers are coming from, but the purchase allotment report throws them off. So that being said, what I suggest is I typically will get on a call with my uh, member for at least three calls together, looking over it together to make sure that they fully understand this report before I allow them to start doing it on their own. So just a heads up with that. Feel free to ask your coach or you can watch the videos and whatnot. It really just depends too, and we'll go over that in a second, of some of these numbers. Um, they do make a difference. So under daily paperwork, I'm going to go to purchase allotment system. Again, this is just a report, so you can actually just watch my screen for this, uh, for this section. Before we actually get started, there's a couple of things I want to show you. On the very top, there's going to be a drop-down box for each cost of goods sold category. So if I'm a back of the house manager, then I'm only going to be focusing on food for this example. Uh, for the sake of my, my class today, I'm just going to go ahead and select food as the category. For the begin date and the end date, it's going to automatically generate as this current month. Now you're going to see, I believe on, on Friday, you're going to see um, purchase allotment systems that we're going to look at it by date range. But for today's example, in the actual system under daily paperwork, I'm going to look at it by the current month that we're on. So I do not suggest that you adjust that. Now, let me go over the different dates. So we have uh, the days of the week and then the actual day. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, whatever it may be. You can see on the first, it was a Friday. We have our gross sales amount. So a couple of different things. 
gross sales amount, that's going to be your actual gross sales, your end of day gross sales, total sales. So if you remember for this specific restaurant, our sales mix is 80.5% for food. So what the system does is it takes that for the forecasted food section, it will take your total uh, forecast. It will subtract that since we're in the food category by 80.5 for this restaurant to give you this forecasted food amount. So this gross sales includes all total categories. This food, this food forecasted food only includes your actual uh, sales mix for the forecast. Under actual food, that's your end of day report. So that's actual food. Basically what the system does is when a day has not passed yet, or has not, uh, it has not been the end of the day, the system will be taking it from your forecasted food total. Then as soon as you enter the end of night summary report, the end of day summary report, then it will take from your actual food to give you your allotted amount. Now this food allotment amount, I honestly try not to go too far in depth with this because I find that it tends to just confuse people. Just know, yes, this is the food allotment amount. This does not include your purchases. One, so it does not include your purchases, which makes a huge difference. Two, what the system does is it takes your food allotment amount to be able to get this amount. It takes your forecasted food, uh, it divides it into your cost of goods sold percentage to give you that food allotment amount. As soon as your actual gets entered, then it starts make, doing the math under the actual food column instead. Again, this food allotment amount does not include your actual spent, and that makes a huge difference. So to be honest, I tend not to focus on this section pretty much at all. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next section. Actual spent. For this specific restaurant, we're in the beginning of the, the month right now, so you guys can actually see the past week, but just know for this specific restaurant, we order for a Thursday for Friday delivery, uh, Tuesday, uh, Monday for Tuesday delivery. So those two days are our big order days, and that's where you can see the actual spent. Also, I want you guys to keep in mind, remember how we just did that paid out? That paid out is still an actual spent. That's still a purchase amount, even though it was take, taken from your cash register money. Now we have a raw food cost percentage. That's all this is, is your food cost percentage. And then under estimated order column, this is the column to focus on. I think it tends to confuse people because there is so many different columns and it's calculating so many different things. Just know that everything that we've gone over within the last two hours feeds into this system. So if, you're, if you don't have your invoices up to date or maybe they're still processing, you're gonna have to wait to view this until your system is up to date with those sections. So end of day report, your sales forecast, you need to have your paid out log entered, you need to have your invoice log entered as well. So like I said, the estimated order column is the column that you wanna go ahead and focus on. Now, it really depends on your restaurant and this is where your coach comes into play. Your coach, you know, coach knows your restaurant better than I do. So that being said, they have a better idea of what date range that you should look at this because there's two different ways to go about this. We can look at this order uh, delivery day to delivery day. So again, Friday uh, delivery and we get deliveries on Tuesday as well. So if I wanted to, I could go ahead and look at it. Friday through Tuesday, I have $2,408.40 left to spend. Now you can look at it that way. That's totally fine because those are our bigger order days. And what we think, what we want is we want to have food on our shelves to last us until our next delivery. That's why we're not using the order day, we're using the delivery day. Now, the other way to go about this is, for example, if you're Monday through Sunday, and this week just started on Monday, and it's gonna end on Sunday, for example, then you can look at it that way. We have $11,827.20 to spend until Sunday. So what that means is, well, one, yes, as of right now, 5-5 five, five at 11.24 a.m., it's telling me that I have $11,827 to spend. But let's just say that your sales were less than your predicted amount. And because of that, it's actually going to allot you less money once your end of day report gets entered in because of that reason. So please note that, you, uh, please know that this will adjust on pretty much a daily basis. 
especially if you guys receive orders on a daily basis, then you can go ahead and make sure that we're on the same page about how you're looking at it. Um, and typically people that look at it, for example, Monday through Sunday, so for the entire week date range, typically order pretty much every single day or receive a delivery on a daily basis. Again, I would speak to your coach since they know that your restaurant better than I do and go over how you should look at it, look at it for your specific restaurant. All right. Any questions or concerns? All right, we have about three more sections to go over. So let's see, we actually do have training systems that we need to go over. We need to go over the two apps and we need to go over RSP analytics. Oh, it's actually been an hour and a half since our last break. So what I'm going to do just for you guys to be able to, um, to get up and walk around is let's take a 10 minute break. We're gonna come back at 11 30, uh, 36, my time. So in 10 minutes, and then we're gonna go ahead and proceed with the rest of the system. I'd say about, uh, about 30 minutes left of today's training. So we will be over about, or we will be early about an hour earlier. So just a heads up, all right?
We have about one more minute until we get started. Please raise your hand if you need extra time. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and move on to the very last section of Restaurant Systems Pro. Again, any questions or concerns, please let me know. Uh, today, for the rest of the sections, you can actually just watch my screen. The first section I want to go over now, after the purchase allotment systems, again, make sure you ask any questions if you have anything regarding about that, is going to be the training systems. Again, so training systems, the easiest way to explain this is let's just say, for example, food handler's card, uh, serve safe card. When you get your food handler's card, typically you get it online. And basically what you do is you read a manual or you watch a video, answer some Q&A questions. And as long as your answers are accurate, um, then you can go ahead and receive that food handler's card. Now, this is not for food handling or anything like that, but this is for your restaurant. It's the same exact concept. So for example, another example, the first restaurant that I've ever worked at was actually Panera Bread or Paradise Bakery. And with that being said, um, if you know anything about them, what they do is they get a new menu every single quarter. So that means that four times a year, they get new menu items. Now, it's not entire menu, it's just new menu items. And so you could also do a training lesson on that. They did that exact thing. So what they would do every quarter is, they would go ahead and create a manual or training manual for the new menu. They would go ahead and have all of their staff answer all the questions and watch the videos and whatnot. Then as, as long as they went ahead and uh, got the questions accurate, then they're good to go and know the new menu. So it's really up to you. You can make anything that you want for the training lessons. You can see we have something as simple as making bread. A couple months ago, I did. Um, I took the resource section for someone for I, be, I believe it was going to be for servers, and I made a train manual day one, day two, day, day three for the staff. So, if anything that you have um, or that you want to make for today's example, again, I'm just going to go ahead and show you guys a few different features in this section. Up in the very top, where it says lesson name you're able to search right over here for the specific lesson that you're looking for. So if I'm looking for a bacon cheeseburger, how to make it, I can go ahead and search from here. I can also click on reset if I want to clear my search. On the bottom grid, I have active and inactive. So if I make a uh, lesson inactive, it won't fully delete unless I'm a site admin. Now, even with a site admin, it's, um, Basically, it's going to be even with a site admin, they have to make it inactive, and then there's another delete icon within this inactive section. So just note that. 
for us, there's actually two bottom grids, but they're actually the same thing. You can see add, edit, clone, inactive, copy, or we can view. Also, we have setting notifications. Now, what I'm going to show you is just a very basics to the training, and I'm going to actually show you using the Making Bread uh, training manual. I can double click on that manual, and you're going to see a couple different things. Up in the very top, you're going to see just the simple stuff, the description, the lesson name, and then who has touched this specific uh, lesson. And that who has touched it, as in who has answered it, who has edited this. All right. The next section is going to be allow retest. It, that's completely up to you. If they fail this, are you going to allow a retest or not? If so, select yes. Time limit for quick test. So there is a time limit or no limit. That's completely up to you. I would suggest you do a time limit limit. Up in the very top as well, you can see the created date. Under list page of list page details of lesson. This is the actual lesson itself. So there's two different kinds. One is tutorial on making pizza dough. I can double click on that. And all this is, is a video that Fred Langley, our CEO, made on how to make uh, bread in his restaurant. They're going to watch this once they're done watching this. And by the way, you can, ex you can import uh, files, insert files, photos, uh, YouTube videos, whatever you want into this. So after they watch that video, on the very bottom, you'll see the list of questions that they need to answer all after they watch both of these videos. They would watch the tutorial on making bread or making dough and the focaccia. After that, they can go ahead and answer this. And then once they're done answering this on the very bottom, you're gonna be able to see your two things. You're gonna be able to assign to employees by using that plus sign. And then the other thing is you're going to going to be able to see if it's completed. And if it is, if you're a manager, you can click on this little eyeball icon and view what they've answered. So you can see I bombed this test. I got a zero out of seven. And that's a zero percent. So that being said, if I failed this, I would most likely want this employee to go ahead and retake this test. In order to do so, I'm gonna have to delete it completely using this little X icon. I then click on the plus sign again, and I can go ahead and select the employee and the date start and end time from there and assign it again. So just a heads up, whatever start and end, uh, end time, so for this one, it's 422 to 429. If I did not answer it within that time, it will, um, it will be expired and I will have to reassign it. So just a heads up as well. Any questions or concerns? All right, no problem. So just know that feature is there for you. And like I said earlier, for the checklist and the lesson, the training system, um, you can absolutely go ahead and look for things under the resource section. Give me one second, guys. All right. The next section is going to be RSP analytics. After RSP analytics, we just have the two apps to go over. So under RSP analytics, um, for right now, you can see I see four different sections. You will only be able to see two different sections. That's going to be the summary and the details. The rest is for um, personally for the coaches at Restaurant Systems Pro. So under the summary, for your restaurant, this is going to give you a summary of who is in your system the most. So for example, I can change this date range. And let's just see, I just wanna see since the beginning of the year till now, I'm gonna click load and it's going to load every single person that has been in the system. On the, uh, on the right hand side, you're gonna be able to see module use percentage. So food, uh, our food system is used 76.89% of the time. So it looks like that is used the most. After that is going to be labor systems at 11.95%. 
also within there, you're going to be able to see each coach, like I said, but within the coach, let's just say Greg Sauerbeck. I can see he has been in this module, in this system, 17 times. He takes the cake for the person that has been in the system the most because his activity is 9.88% of the system. So I can actually click on this little view details icon, little eyeball icon, and see exactly what Greg Sauerbeck has been doing. Now, the cool thing about this is a couple months ago, for example, I had a chef get fired and he quit. I can't honestly, I can't remember exactly what happened, but basically he was let go and he was angry. And so what had happened is the owner already took him out of the system. Now, if you've ever talked to any of us, we will always say, do not share your username and passwords and do not save your username and passwords on your computer or on the generalized computer for your restaurant. Uh, for this reason. What the chef did was he went into the computer before he, lo he left. He signed into someone else's login information because they saved it on the computer and he ended up deleting half of their recipe costing cards. Now, yes, he deleted them, but because he wasn't a site admin, he could not fully delete them. And so that was great that we were able to recover them. So that's the good part about it. Now, another thing is, I went into that, that person's login information under the analytics, and I just wanted to see what else that he was looking at to make sure that he did not um, mess up anything else besides recipe costing cards. So it's a great way to hold your team accountable. Also, something else is one day, a couple months ago, I had someone tell me that they spent five hours entering invoices. There's no possible way that you could spend five hours unless you have literally maybe like two or three weeks worth of a month's worth of invoices that you have not entered in the system you're trying to get caught up. Again, that's the reason why you should be entering invoices on a daily basis. But that being said, I could literally go into the system and I, I straight up told their owner that I could see that they only were in the system for about five minutes. So just a heads up, we are able to hold you accountable using that feature. Also, another section is going to be details. It's pretty much the same thing as to what we just went over. The only difference is it's separated by labor systems, food systems, all of that good stuff. So like I was saying about the recipe costing cards, if I want to see recipe costing cards, I can open up the food beverage retail system, open up recipe costing, and then from there, for whatever date range that I chose, it automatically generates the current week that you're on. Um, you can see everyone who has touched it. I can then click on the eyeball icon and I can see what time, day, and the user that was in that specific section. So you can utilize both sections to know exactly what this person has been doing. Please note, site admins do not have access to be able to, um, so we are not able to track site admins information. So please note. Now give me one second, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and pause my screen I'm going to go ahead and join this Zoom using my cell phone, and that way I can show you the two different apps. And that's the very last thing that we need to go over today. Give me one second. I'm just trying to join into my Zoom.
Hi guys, one second. For some reason, <clears throat> sometimes when I join with Zoom, it does not let me go out of the Zoom bar. Let me, give me one second to try to figure this out. Yeah, as soon as I get out of Zoom, it just freezes on me. All right, so let me do this for you guys. Give me one second. All right, guys, so I am currently having technical difficulties again with this link, and I apologize for some reason. I tried it this morning. It worked. Now it's not working again. Um, so what I'm going to do for a workaround is on your Zoom, there's going to be an icon that allows you to raise your hand. What I would like you to do is raise your hand, and I can send you. It's a full list of videos that I have on Restaurant Systems Pro. Awesome. Thanks, Samantha. I saw you raised your hand. So it looks like this. Kristen, I see you raised your hand. Awesome. Anyone else that would like to receive these emails? Oh, perfect. All right. So I'm going to send you this full list, and I will contain the Connect app, too. I'm actually the one that did all of these videos. So it's the same exact thing that you would hear me do. Um, but it's basically a how-to guide on the entire app itself. It gives you a link how to download the apps. It gives you a Smart Shift app. And then I will contain, like I said, the Smart Connect apps as well. All right, Jonathan and Michael, as you see, you provided me with uh, raise your hand. Thank you so much, guys. Let me just make sure that I have all of your email addresses. Give me one second before we sign out. Michael, I have your email address. Kristen, I do have yours. Renee sent me that yesterday. Samantha, are you from Birch and Vine? If so, I would have your email. And then Jonathan, I do have your email as well. All right, awesome. All right, guys, so what I'm going to do is give me about five minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and send that off. What I would like for you guys to do, is, if you guys can, um, and if you're joining tomorrow's class, if not, feel free to email me directly, but I'm gonna go ahead and send you these videos. Go ahead and watch them whenever you, ha you have the time, and then feel free to ask me any questions or concerns that you have. I suggest that you actually forward that email off to all of your staff. That way they can download the app and get it ready. So if you're, if you're about to get started in the scheduling system, then we can go ahead and get them set, set up as well. All right, guys, so this is the end of today's class. We are ending one minute early. Again, Kristen, Jonathan, Michael, and Samantha, I'll go ahead and send that to you in a couple minutes, but I really appreciate you guys taking the time to come today, to today's class, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Thanks so much, guys. Have a great day. Bye, David. Thank you.